Praise the Lord, everybody. So this just came to me um, as I was in prayer. The Lord told me to talk to you guys about people who access the spiritual world illegally, the ways that they access the spiritual world illegally, and then how this is a problem in the church and how many people are deceived because you see someone operating and you say they're spiritual, right? And they're flowing in the gifts, but they've accessed it illegally. They access information illegally. They access um, the gifts illegally, all right? So I'm going to give you a couple examples as we have a couple of people logging in, but this is very dangerous, all right? We live in a world where, you know, with social media, everybody's a prophet, everybody has a word from God, and everybody's at different levels in their faith, so you don't know better. So a lot of people, if they see somebody demonstrating something, uh, they automatically assume that this person is anointed from God. Now, we know that the Bible says the gifts of God are without repentance, right? And the Bible says people will prophesy in his name and they would do X, Y, and Z in his name. And he will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, but they still walk in power. All right, so check this out. I'm going to give you guys a couple um, examples. Let, let's look at Acts 19.15. The demons, the evil spirits said, Jesus we know and Paul we know, but who are you? So the demons said, I know who Jesus is. I know who Paul is. They had this information, right? We also see um, different, the, the Bible says that even the devils know who Jesus is, right? So even demons have truth. Even demons have revelation. So the first question is when somebody's prophesying to you, are giving you a word of knowledge. The Bible says to test every spirit. Are they giving you that prophecy? Are they giving you that word of knowledge because they got that revelation from a demon? Just because somebody stands you up in church and reads your address and prophesies something to you that very well may be true, they might have accessed that information illegally and have put on a front to make it look like it's a God thing. And so what happens is the reason why this is important is because the devil always wraps a whole lie in a little bit of truth sometimes. That's how he'll deceive you. You'll see somebody and they'll prophesy something to you and you say, man, that's accurate. What about horoscopes? People read the horoscopes and they say, man, that, that sounds like me. Let me look up my birthday. That Actually, that sounds right. And they believe it. Why? Because what the enemy does is he tricks you and he gets you mesmerized, right? And then you follow it into a deception. So they said, Jesus, we know, and Paul, we know, but who are you? So demons had a revelation of some truth. In 1 Samuel 28, we see that King Saul went to a witch and she did what? She stirred up, she raised up uh, Samuel. Think about that for a second. How was she able to do that? She accessed the spiritual world illegally and was able to raise up from the dead the spirit of the prophet of God. So there's people who illegally access the spirit world and they can do things and bring prophecies that come true, but it's not of God. It's perverted. Look at Luke 4. When Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, a demon raised up and said, let us alone. What do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Why? Because the demon knew who Jesus was. Once again, you see a demon with revelation. So just because somebody prophesies to you and you say, man, that's accurate. That's true. Remember that even demons can have revelation and know the truth. Look at Exodus 7 and 12. It says each one of them threw down their staff, right? Talking about Pharaoh's guys. And those staffs turned to snakes, but Aaron's staff swallowed theirs. Somehow they were able to access a mimicking kind of power, right? Not the real power, but they accessed the spiritual world illegally and were able to do something that almost looked like the same thing that Aaron did. But Aaron's snake devoured theirs. So we see this all throughout the Bible. Why do we think it's different now? So one of the greatest deceptions that we have now is people who look anointed. They look 
like they're prophetic, but they're accessing the spiritual world through a spirit of Jezebel, through a spirit of manipulation, through a spirit of rebellion, through a spirit of witchcraft. So uh, even people who use drugs, people who people smoke weed and get high and see demons and stuff. It's not a joke. It's not, oh, oh, they're high. They didn't see nothing. No, they're accessing the spiritual world illegally through witchcraft, illegally, demonically. All right. There's people who smoke. There's people who drunk and, and they say, man, I, I saw demons in the spirit and it was true. There's people who, who have, have smoked and got drunk and they'll prophesy or say something. They're, they're accessing it illegally. This is why the Bible says what? Test every spirit. The spirit can camouflage itself and look like a, a preacher. And then a side note, most of these preachers out here, you can look on social media. If you're a preacher like me, you see a lot of stuff is plagiarized. They got it from somebody else. They didn't get the revelation from God directly. They copied and pasted it from somebody else, then present it to you. And I'm not saying that it's absolutely wrong to do that, all right? Uh, because, you know, there are some genuine pastors like, man, that was good. I'm going to preach it, preach it to my church. But there's some people literally faking the funk. And this is why it's dangerous. They don't have knowledge. They don't have a connection with God. They don't have a revelation with God. So they take something, they taint it, and then they give it to you in their flesh and lead you in error. So there's a couple examples for you there right there in the Bible. I want you to really think about that and be careful who you listen to. Acts 19.15, Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? So the demons knew the truth. So people could prophesy to you and tell you something that's true. Hey, brother, I know you. I know you're called to preach. I know you're called to do X, Y, and Z, but it's a demon that gave them the revelation. You don't know what people are entertaining. People just watching all kinds of movies, opening up their spirit to anything, having all kinds of sleeping around with anybody, soul ties. You know what, what the Bible says, two flesh become one. So you're sleeping around with people and they've got all these kind of spirits and then they jump on you and you're operating in it, flowing it. Many people operating in a Jezebel spirit, they don't even know it. So it says, Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? So demons can have revelation. First Samuel 28 King Saul went to a witch and she literally raised up the prophet spirit and they were having a conversation. She didn't do that through God. She didn't do that through Christ. She had access to the spiritual world. However, she did it illegally. Luke four, Jesus in the synagogue, let us alone. What do you have to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth, the demon knew. So just because somebody's running around, and, and, and I got to stress this to you, this is why you got to have your own prayer life. Because just because they sound good on, on the Facebook, or they sound good on the TV broadcast, or they sound good at the church you visit to, and even if they're saying accurate stuff, it doesn't mean it's from God. And that's what's so hard for this generation to accept. Because we see somebody prophesying something true and we're so impressed because they're so, we don't see miracles like that, right? So we're so impressed because they look so spiritual. Yeah, they're spiritual illegally, demonically. Exodus seven twelve, they threw down their staff. And it turned into snakes, just like Aaron's staff, doing the same thing Aaron was doing. But Aaron's snake devoured theirs. Don't get impressed because people throw down their staff. They throw down their gift and it looks spiritual and it looks anointed. Let me tell you something. You better seek God for yourself. You better be praying for yourself. You better be fasting for yourself. You better read your Bible for yourself. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. I, I just, you know... I don't get impressed because somebody prophesies to me. I'm like, you could be right, but you could know that information through a demon. You could know that information because you operate in a Jezebel spirit. You could even know that information because you just know how to read people. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it. So that's why the Bible talks about doctrines of devils, right? Because people are prophesying and doing all this stuff, and it sounds accurate, but they're doing it through the power of a devil. And so the doctrine they give you, the teaching they give you doesn't line up with the word of God, right? And then seducing spirits. The seducing spirit is, I see you prophesy or I see you preach and it looks anointed and it looks gifted, right? 
but what they're teaching you doesn't line up with the word of God. How they're living doesn't line up with the world of God. But because I'm so caught up in what I see you doing in the spirit, right, I follow you. And that's where the great deception is because you're following a seducing spirit. The Bible says it's a wicked generation that's going to ask for a sign. So, oh, let me find somebody to prophesy. You shouldn't be ex surprised when people prophesy. You shouldn't be surprised when people walk in the supernatural. You shouldn't be surprised when people are getting healed. So that is not the measuring stick to see if this person is really of God. Just let me, I'll, I'll end it with this. Just because they prophesy, just because they operate in gifts does not mean they're of God. One more time, I'm going give it, to give it to you very quickly because I know people are coming in and out of the live. Acts 19, 15, Jesus, we know, Paul, we know, but who are you? They demons knew the information. First Samuel 28, a witch steered up the, the spirit of the prophet Samuel. How did she do that? Accessing the spiritual world illegally. The problem is if some of you, some of you would go to a church right now and they said, I'm going to stir up the, the, the spirit of so-and-so, right? And, and if they were actually to do it, some people are so ignorant to the word of God, they would, whoa, th this is the move of God. God. God brought this person back from the dead to speak to us because that's what people are looking for. They're looking for power. And that's where the church is found because we're not walking in our power and authority. And Jesus said that we would do greater things than the things that he did in the New Testament. All right. The last two again, Luke 4. What would you have to do with us, Jesus? A demon screaming out in the synagogue. Pray about it, saints. There's so many people out here. I'm a prophet. Oh, I got a word from God. And you know what? It disgusts me. Because you know what? Real prophets, number one, they were not politically correct. Real prophets of the Bible were not popular. The children of Israel rejected them. They didn't like them. How is it that all of these people, we have so many prophets in America, but not many of them are talking about what's going on in the country? The prophets in the Bible talked about what was going on in the country. The prophets in the Bible talked about what was going on with the neighboring kingdoms. You can see, oh, God's going to bless you with a car, but you can't see anything real. God's going to bless you with a husband in, in six months, boo, 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 boo. Where do you see that in the Bible? But we get so just infatuated with the gifts. Remember, the Bible says, I did this in your name and I did that in your name. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Just because they operate in some kind of spiritual dimension does not mean that they know God. Love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus' name.